If you are like me, you find a certain satisfaction in a well-crafted CLI or terminal tool, especially when you use color, animation, or redraw the terminal. Something like that, or like this, or that. How do we make one of those? You are asking yourself, hopefully. This must be your lucky day because this is the subject of this video. End sequence. An NC sequence is a standard signal lane to control everything from the cursor position to styling to colors. In other words, it's a sequence of character that makes commands to the terminal. I made this interactive script to show you the core concept. It uses JavaScript and Dino, but the concept doesn't change no matter what language or runtime you are using. I will run this script that will simply redirect the raw input from my keyboard to the terminal's output. Dino run unstable. I can start typing anything. Hello. Now I will type the first NC sequence to render all incoming input to red. I do escape, square bracket, 3, 1, and lowercase m. World. Well, close enough. If I want to render the text in blue, I just need to type in a new sequence with the appropriate number for blue, which is 34. Escape, square bracket, 34, lowercase m. Now everything is blue. I can also set the background color. Escape, square bracket, 43, lowercase m. It's like IKEA. Next, I can just reset the color. Escape, square bracket, 0, lowercase m. And now we're back to basics. Within the boundary of my terminal, I can move the cursor. Escape, square bracket, H. I'm typing here. And then I can do escape, square bracket, 2, 0, semicolon, 2, 0, capital letter H. And now I'm typing here. If I move my cursor back to the top left corner, I can clear the rest of the screen, giving me a blank slate. Escape, square bracket, H, escape, square bracket, J. I did promise you some drawing, so let me type away. Oh look, a heart, which reminds me that if you're subscribed to this channel, I love you. Before we go any further, I think it's important to mention that not every terminal client supports NC sequence, so you might want to test yours before you get too excited. That being said, it probably does. If you want to confirm, go to your terminal and type echo dollar term. If the value contains one of those words, you're good to go. It will probably say something like X term. Now, if you're running PowerShell, I think it supports NC sequence but the feature is turned off by default. While we're on the terminal, another thing you might want to play with is a command called tput. The command is useful when you need to query the state and features of your terminal. The subcommands that might interest you are the following. To output the number of columns, you do tput calls. To output the number of rows or line, you do tput lines. And finally, to output the number of cutters, you do tput cutters. So now we know that my terminal has 80 columns, 25 lines, and is capable of displaying 256 colors. Awesome. So this video is marketed as JavaScript fundamental, so I guess I should start writing some JavaScript. So first and foremost, the easiest way to type an NC sequence in JavaScript is to start typing backslash x1b which is the hexadecimal number for the escape key. So we can do something like this. Console log, quotes, backslash, x1, b, square bracket, 31, lowercase m, something went wrong. And now backslash, x1, b, square bracket, 0, m, to reset. So this will render the string red. And this works with all sorts of sequences. So here I type backslash x1b square bracket h 
backslash x1b square bracket j backslash x1b square bracket 36 m and type ah so clean i think it's already obvious that using nc sequence this way is very noisy so we can wrap the command that we want to use into functions for the following demo i will use type array if you're not familiar with type array i made a video on the subject so you can pause this video and go watch it i'll wait at any rate here's a refresher a typed array is an array that can hold a specific amount of bit per item. When dealing with characters, it is typical to use an unsigned 8 bits integers. If you don't know why, again, go watch the video. So the first thing I will do is start writing the function that I know I will use. So for the first one, I know that I will want to clear my screen. So I'll type one that's called clear function that returns a new u in 8 array of the following characters so 27 is for the escape key 91 is for this left square bracket and 72 is for the capital letter h again 27 91 and then 74 for the letter j so the next function i'm going to write is the move function so this will allow me to move my cursor around the screen. This function will take an x coordinate and a y coordinate and will return a new uint8 array of the following value. So 2791 again. And then so I need to encode the number into the proper 8 bits integers. So to do this, I'll get the encode function from a new text encoder. So this function will take any number or string and output the appropriate uint8 array. So I can spread this value and then add 59, which is the semicolon and do the same thing with x. Finally, just 72, which is the letter h. Now I know I need a fill function that's going to take any number and will return a new typed array, which the length is going to be n and will fill it with 32. So 32 is simply a space. So given the number, if I say 10, I'll get 10 32s. This will help with drawing. Next, I know I need a inverse function to invert the color of the terminal. So if my terminal is white on black, I want it to be black on white. So I'll return a new typed array of 2791, 55 for the number 7 and 109 for the lowercase letter m. Finally, I might need a reset function to reset all the styling. One and now 48 for 0 and 109 for m. Now what I need is a buffer so I'll create a new variable called xs, which is a typed array of, let's say, 1024. Doing this, I will reserve about a kilobyte of memory. So now to use my utility functions, all I need to do is type xs set, and then the function I want to use, which is going to return the typed array, and the position where I want to set these items. So just to hit this home, I'll just type in a little bit more. I know that excess set um, inverse. So I, if I know that clear is one, two, three, four, five, six byte, I know that this one needs to be set at the sixth byte. And then I can do xs set, let's say fill 10, at the what position? So 7, 8, 9, 10. 
at the tenth position. So now we have set about 20 bytes, and if I want to test this, I'll simply call Dino write Dino std out rid, which is the resource ID of my terminal, and then put access as the buffer. Let's just try this. So I'll just do Dino run generate.js and hit enter, and you see that we got our 10 blank character. So in concept, this works. But now, obviously, doing this and counting my bytes is not a very safe approach. I could have an index and then every time that I run a in command, increase my index and then use that index for the next one. It all seemed pretty tedious, so I'm going to do the following. Stick with me. I'm going to have an array where I'll put all of my commands one by one that I want to run sequentially. And then I'll reduce those values. My reducer will take a function. The first argument is the index and the typed array that was returned by my utility function. And then with this, I can simply set the type to array, add the index, and then simply return the index for the next command. Obviously, my index will start at zero. I don't need this anymore. And now I can test this new code and see if it still works. And it does. So let me type away and enjoy this time lapse. And we're done. How do you like it? Look, it's all cute. Cute, a bit derpy. What's great about doing it this way is that we now have the whole array to render our logo. So we could even write a new JavaScript file on the fly to generate the logo for us. So it doesn't even have to go through all of these steps. So what we're going to do is type await dino write text file and then write the path is going to be our current working directory slash logo.js and the value is going to simply be export const logo is equal to a new u in 8 array Here's the parentheses and our square brackets. And then we can simply output xs to string into it. Oop. So now if we run our code again, this time we'll need to allow permission so we can write to the file system. We'll not only display a logo, but more importantly, we have a new file called logo.js, which is exporting our logo. So it means we can import our logo from our logo.js file and we'll output it using the text decoder and decode our logo and output it. Voila! I can do you one better and even I could simply write a new file in binary this time maybe simply called logo, that will contain only the binary of our logo file. And now if we run the generate file again, it'll display our logo, create our JS file, and also this time create a logo file that will just print the Dino logo every time that we need it. Using NC sequence is a powerful way to make any CLI or terminal tool interactive and engaging. I suggest that you look up the Wikipedia page to get a reference for all the various sequences and their effects. If you are curious to learn more about readable, writable stream, typed array, and NC sequence, you should subscribe to this channel. I will use these concepts in an incoming video series. 
Otherwise, don't forget to hit the like button, share, or leave a comment if you've learned something today. Okay, bye now.